So by default, you probably know that StyleGAN uh, prefers that your images and your training models be set up as square. Uh, and that's still my recommendation to this day. Um, if you don't train a square model, you run into other issues with um, other tools like projection or GAN space or similar uh, other like you know non uh, non official style GAN tools that might let you do more with it. Um, but at the same time, like most of us want to generate images that are not square. Uh, either our training data is rectangular, or you know we want to post to Instagram, or we maybe want to create a video that's sixteen by nine. Um, and there is actually a technique to do that. So we'll look at that today. Uh, so I actually first heard about this technique from Hans Brewer and Justin Pinkney. We sort of described how it works, and I understood how it works conceptually, but I couldn't figure out the code to do it. Uh, and then just this week, I was digging through Vadim Epstein's uh, notebook, and I found that he had some tools that allowed you to generate uh, rectangular images um, from a square model. So uh, I asked Vadim, and he was nice enough to let me uh, port that over to my model. So we'll look at how to do that in this video. Um, I also want to link to some of Vadim's repos as well as Patreon. Because um, he's just a really smart, smart guy doing really cool things with style again, other machine learning tools. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking him out. Um, so the first thing is I put this in my notebook um, in the sort of, I have like a massive sort of kitchen sink uh, PyTorch notebook. So I definitely recommend uh, starting there. Um, you will need to uh, update your repo. Um, I have some code here that kind of works to do this. Um, your better bet might be to actually like archive your old version and uh, just reclone the repo into Drive, um, or just skip Drive entirely and just generate to Colab and then download those images. Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, but the, you do want to work with the latest version of my repo, otherwise you won't be able to use these tools. Uh, so let's take a look at just how to generate some images. Um, so this works just like any other uh, image generation tool, and I've added some notes here as well for folks interested. Um, the key here is that there's two additional methods you want to add. One is called size and one is called scale type. And we'll look at how to use those in just a minute. Um, but essentially size is what, what output format do you want it in? And this should be in pixels. Uh, so in this case, what I've added here is I've added size. Uh, and then I've given, you give it first the width dimension and then dash and then the height dimension. So in this case, I've done 1820 by 1024. Um, if you're looking for a 16 by nine ratio, this is the dimension to use. Um, and then you can upscale it to 1920 by 1080 if you want to, and that'll work just fine. Um, so once we've set the size, uh, we then also want to set the scale type. And there are four scale types, and I'll show you what each of them looks like in just a minute. Um, I generally stick with Sim. I find Sim my personal favorite. Uh, but I definitely recommend doing this with your images and seeing what works best. Uh, another little note about this technique is I find it tends to work better with abstract images. Uh, we will look at this with FFHQ and probably find that the images look a little weird. Um, like there's some errant hairs or duplicate faces. Um, so your mileage may vary with this technique with your own images or with your model. So um, give it a try, see what you want to do. Uh, by default, I should say scale type is pad. Um, so pad works well. I find sim, sim tends to be my preference, but uh, I definitely recommend trying this. So we'll just add, it, add in these two. Um, and one other note is this can work with both the image generation tools as well as the interpolation tools. Um, so feel free to just, you know, uh, take these two pieces of argument and just place them in any of the notebooks or any other code cells in the notebook. Uh, there might be one or two that don't work. Um, my guess is that it won't work for projection um, and it probably won't work for, at the moment at least, flesh digressions, um, although I'm hoping to fix that soon. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see here I'm just running uh, four, five seeds and you'll see that it does say it's rendering at a custom size and rendering uh, with, a, with a specific padding method. And so I've already gone ahead and downloaded these images, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Um, so you'll see this is Sim. So you'll see here what happens is uh, the image the, is sort of centered, and then along the sides you can kind of see it's like been duplicated. And the way this technique works is, um, if you recall, uh, StyleGAN works with an upscaling method, right? It starts with a very small image, and then it scales it progressively up uh, into the, the full-size image you have. So. Uh, that very base layer is actually uh, a four by four matrix. And uh, that's because four by four, it's square. Um, so if we can make that six by four, uh, we can actually make it wider. Uh, so the technique that does this is it basically, it, it duplicates um, the model weights um, on those sides and generates a six by four uh, dimension matrix. And then every layer after that gets upscaled. <clears throat> so these different scale types are essentially ways in which we duplicate um, that matrix. 
right? So you can kind of see a little bit of this hair. So the way this works is probably like doing some sort of symmetry um, to this. And if we look at pad, uh, we'll see pads a little bit more obvious. Um, pad tends to almost reflect things. Um, so you get a little bit of, especially with faces, you get some hair that just sits there as well as some other things. So this again, I would probably say, depending on your model, you'll want to play with these, ver these values a little bit. And then the two methods that have side in them, um, just instead of centering the, the main, uh, the four by four matrix, it actually just pushes one to the side. So in this case, you get a lot more of this duplicated um, image. Uh, this is pad side and this is sim side. Sim side looks pretty creepy. There's like a ghost here. My guess is that what, uh, what Vadim did here is add a little bit of noise into the matrix weights. And therefore uh, you get a little bit of a different image um, at each location. Um, so that's during images. Um, you can use these scale types. That's pretty much all you need to worry about. And if we go down to during interpolations, uh, the same thing happens here. So you'll use the process of interpolation type, and then you just edit both size and scale. Uh, and then this works just like any other interpolation in my notebook. And once you have that, you can take a look at what that looks like. This is an example of using uh, the sim scale type. And you can kind of see uh, you get some similarities in sort of the way that these are mirrored, but they're a little different, right? So in an image like this, which is pretty naturalistic looking, you know, no one's going to necessarily notice that like, oh, that looks like you reflected this. Um, so I think it's, it's a pretty cool method. Uh, it works fairly easily um, and it does work with pretty much any model. So it's a nice technique um, if you do want to generate a non-square image. So that's it for this video. Um, if you run into issues or you're trying to convert this in other places, um, drop me a note in my Slack channel and I will happily answer that there. I um, hope you can make some cool non-rectangular images, or sorry, non-square images now. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.